Okay, well, welcome to another short Octave video. Uh, so you may recall in Unit 1, Week 3, there was a an Octave tutorial or an Octave lecture. Um, I suggest you watch this video after you've watched that lecture. If you, if you haven't yet watched that lecture, please watch that one first. Um, but I just wanted to expand on what we did in that class um, because I think it will it will help you in your assignment if you are using Octave to answer the questions in your assignment rather than MATLAB. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to Octave Online now. Uh, we'll open that up. Octave Online, it should load us up. Okay, I'm going to open a script that is very similar to the problem that we solved in uh, that week three. So let's go through this line by line really quickly. So we got clear all, which clears all the variables. Close all, which uh, closes any figures that may be on. Uh, CLC just clears the command window to give us a nice clean slate. Uh, warnings off, well this is just a command you don't really need to know. Um, but it basically just turns off Octave warnings just to clean up the, uh, the command window a little bit. Okay, but here's really where the, the magic starts. So, firstly, we define this symbolic variable y, which is a function of x, same as in the, uh, the week 3 tutorial, and then we define the differential equation. So, dy by dx is this term here. So, dy by dx is just diff of y of x, comma, x. So, we're differentiating y of x, that symbolic variable, with respect to x take away 0 0.2 times x times y of x equals 0. Okay, so this is just our differential equation. dy by dx minus 0 0.2 times x times y equals 0. Okay, this line here, sol1 equals desolve. Okay, so this desolve is the command that solves the differential equation. de is the definition of our differential equation from line 7 above here. Uh, and then we had our initial condition when t x equals 0, so when x equals zero, 0, y is equal to 0 0.3. Okay, and if I, well, if I uh, comment out these, uh, if I comment out these lines here, oops, I accidentally it right, ran, but okay. If I comment out these lines, let's just see what we get if we, if we run that. Okay, so I have to add more time to each of these, each of these uh, runs. So I just watch down here and wait for it to say add 15 seconds and I click on that. Okay, finally connects up to the symbolic Python interface and it should spit out for us the solution to that initial value problem. Okay, there it is. Okay. So we've also plotted some things here, let's come back to that. Okay, so anyway, the, we've had the solution to this initial value problem here which was 3 over 10 times uh, the exponential of x squared over 10, okay? And so in the previous class I said that, well, if we want to plot that, what we can do is we can define the, the x values from negative 5 in steps, from negative 5 uh, in steps of 0 0.1 all the way up to 5. So we, we define that vector. Uh, we open a new figure, and I might just put something here CLF, which is clear figure, so that clears everything that's already on that figure. Hold on, and see this is the part that we did last time. So we plotted, we plotted the solution, so the x values were x val, and then we inputted the this solution, so 3 over 10, exponential of x to the power of 2 um, over 10. So we manually inputted that, but for your assignment, that may be too much work, right? There may be too much typing um, to do that. Okay, and then we, we, we change the axis on here too, but okay. The main point is that in the previous video, we had to manually enter this, um, enter this command here. So we had to manually enter the exact solution. So let's go one step further this time, and let's get Octave to automatically detect this solution, okay, without us having to type it in manually, so that'll save us some time. Okay, so um, what I've got here is a way to do that. All right, so I'm just going to take this line here, okay. So my 
y of, on the right hand side here, my solution y of x equals 3 over 10 e to the x squared over 10. This is stored in, in my command, in my, uh, in my um, MATLAB file, my co coding file, as sol1. So sol1 equals d solve, so we solve the differential equa equation with the initial condition. So sol1 is this solution that you see on screen on the right here. If now I say solution 1, so it's just a name, you can call it anything you like, equals function underscore handle, and then in brackets RHS, which stands for right hand side of Sol1. Okay, well, if I uh, run that now, let's just, uh, let's, let's break there. Break just stops the code running any further. Okay, so if I run that now, I get uh, an error. Error sourcing file. I don't know what's wrong with that. Well, let's get rid of break. Maybe that. Maybe it doesn't like break. What's wrong with this thing? Okay, it seems to be working now. I'll add another 15 seconds. And up here you can see that solution 1 is the right hand side of that differential equation. So 3 over 10 times exponential of x squared over 10. Okay, so by adding this command function handle right hand side of sol1 and I set that equal to solution 1, now I have a variable that is just the right hand side of the solution. So just the 3 over 10 exponential of x squared over 10. What I can then do is define my variable y1. So what, what this does is it takes that solution, solution 1, and in brackets I put x val. So x vals is that vector x between negative 5 and 1. And what this does is it substitutes in the values of that vector into y1. Okay. So now if I if I run if I run this code then I should get a vector y1, which is the value of y, or the solution, at all these different values of x. So it'll be a big long vector, like so, yes. Okay, so here it is. y1 is some big long vector. Okay, and then finally, if I want to plot that, um, well, what I want to do is I want to plot x val, so the, the x vector, versus y1, that vector we've just defined. I'm going to plot the, the plot in green and use a green star as a marker. And well, I've set the marker size to be 3. Uh, so now if I run that, you've probably already seen the uh, this graph here, but let's run it one more time. Okay, so now the, the red line underneath is the solution or the, or the, the manual way of entering the uh, the solution manually, uh, which was which we did in the week three class. So this line here is the red line. Um, the green markers, though, they they are the solution that we get using this function handle. Okay, so basically these two lines here, 23 and 24, are going to be very useful to you if you don't want to be writing out the exact solution of these differential equations manually each and every time. Um, so if you do this, this should help you with your assignment one. If you have any questions, please get in touch. Thank you.